क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा Hello friends we'll be discussing certain details about what happens when there is a change in method of depreciation between the tenure of any organization who's charging depreciation on any assets let's figure it out with a small illustration rather small example which will be added in this specific sheet So when we speak about change in method of depreciation, we basically talk about a simple thing. Supposingly, you are charging SLM method or rather any method for certain duration of any organization. If your estimated life of an asset is around 10 years and if you are charging SLM method for the good 2 years or 3 years and after that you think about changing the whole depreciation method from SLM to WDV or any other method of your own choice. in such cases you have to figure out that what is the profit and loss what is the depreciation change that is happening what is the useful life that is supposed to be considered what is the rate that will be followed and how the depreciation to be calculated by far the most important question that means how the depreciation is supposed to be calculated when there is a certain change in the method of depreciation we'll be understanding that with the solving illustration or rather a solving example that will be provided here in this question what we need to understand is that you need to understand the first part that means basically which method has been used and until what year it has been used after that what is the change in the depreciation that has caused and whether after changing the depreciation whether we have a profit situation or a loss situation in it that's what we need to understand however the basic part will be understood in this specific video and afterwards when we will be going through in the next video where we will be having an in depth solving pattern of this specific analysis we'll be doing that on that part so right now the only basic criteria is based on how to solve change in method of depreciation we'll be solving two illustrations on it rather the first one will be a basic one and the second one will be an advanced one that will be done in the next video so right now let's go ahead with the certain basic requirements on this specific thing i'll jot it down here and then we'll further go ahead with the example solving So we've mentioned certain points here for your reference. We'll go one by one through each point and explain them in detail. The first point refers to take tenure into consideration. Now, what do you mean by taking tenure into consideration? This basically refers to till what period one specific method has been followed, and after that period, which method is supposed to be followed until. a certain time that means whether it is supposed to be carried out for the whole year until the useful life or whether it has to be carried out for few years after the useful life or rather the change in method of depreciation so for the first two years if you are using slm method and after that you think about changing it to wdv method or any other method that may be like production method or machine r rate method or any sinking fund method or annuity method etc etc you can use that method but until what time you are going to use that method that has to be defined in the question so that will help you to analyze how much depreciation is getting charged and what is the effect of it on profit and loss account whether we are paying additional tax on it or whether we are saving tax or rather we are showing a profit at a nominal rate because in case if the depreciation amount is less through one account or rather through one method and if the other method is showing a high or higher side of that specific depreciation account then we need to figure out what is the difference between both of these methods and what is the effect of it on profit and loss account statement because in case if you are showing higher differentiation or rather you can say higher depreciation in both of these methods one of the method is showing very low and the other method is showing very high so you need to put it at an equilibrium rate 
so if it is high you will be ending up utilizing all the benefits of the depreciation for a smaller amount of years rather as compared to the higher number of years if you are using smaller amount of depreciation the benefit will go on for longer years but it will be beyond useful life it will be of no use for us and on the other hand you will be ending up paying more of taxation because the profit will be overhyped so either there is a overhype profit or there is a lower hype profit which can say that one is on the higher side one is on the extreme lower side you have to put it on an equilibrium and that's when you will be able to understand how to gauge or which method to be utilized for effective utilization of depreciation under accounting standards the next point refers to take method to be changed into consideration now if you are using SLM method there is a flat out discount or rather you can say flat out depreciation on it which is a fixed amount but if the same method is changed to WDV what is the difference that you are earning or what is the benefit that you are getting by changing this method because everything has to be justified when it comes to senior management or when it comes to management being questioned about why there has been a change from any other authorities who is governed or who is governing these kind of accounting standards so if you have SEBI if you have accounting standards or DAI who is going further and understanding about all these details why there is was a change in method of depreciation the company needs to be in a position where it can explain why the change of method of depreciation was sought for and why a specific method has been selected over the earlier method Again, when the method of depreciation is changed, you also need to consider what is the rate of depreciation that is taken into consideration. Now, if the rate of depreciation says that it was earlier 10% and now that you have started charging 25% on it, now how do you justify that is also a playing game here. So, if at all you are charging 10% on straight line method, it will give you certain amount and if you are charging WDV on a written down value method, that will give you a certain amount. One will be lower side, one will be higher side. So, comparing that you need to understand whether it is coming out of an equilibrium side which will be on more beneficial betterment or rather we can say that the betterment of any specific address or any specific organization whereby if one asset is being depreciated on a constant rate that means going down and down and down without the benefit of it being utilized for the whole useful life so you need to mark an equilibrium or you need to hammer that point whereby we can say that the useful life of the asset is also justified along with the depreciation amount so the method as well as the rate of depreciation should be taken into consideration while the change of depreciation or the switch over in the depreciation is done So you also have to consider that the base method which was used and the change in method that is supposed to be used the difference between them should be compared and only after actual comparison and analysis over it you should make the changes because any change that you make in such parameters which is or affecting or will be affecting the profit and loss account of any company you have to have good amount of justification as to why the changes were made and how they were incorporated so that easily it becomes achievable for the company to go ahead and put forward his points without being cross questioned for any wrong decision being taken in this once that the change has been made you also need to figure out that you need to analyze the change in the depreciation that means if earlier you were charging 10,000 depreciation per annum and it has supposedly moved or abruptly moved to 30,000 per annum now the useful life of the asset won't change it will still remain the same for like five years or ten years but if you're increasing the depreciation by such an hyped amount there are quite possible chances that the value of that specific asset will become zero before its useful life so it shouldn't be the case that the value of the useful life or value of that specific asset becomes zero before the useful life because the useful life should also come in picture or in parallel sync with the value of that asset so the year when that asset value is reducing to somewhere below 10 percent 
or getting zero it should be either the last year or the second last year so that similar way you can understand what is the scrap value and whether you're utilizing that asset even after the asset become obsolete or scrapped out and after that even if you're using the asset for good number of useful life until the useful life is completed so for example before charging depreciation at 10 percent on slm method you used to charge it on 10% on WTV method. Now that specific utilization gave you 20,000 depreciation. Now this specific utilization is giving you 25,000 depreciation. So additional 5,000 increase in that is bringing you additional or rather a quick depreciation reduction in the value of the asset. And hence the useful life which was seven years the asset value is becoming zero at the end of the fifth year itself so it shouldn't be the case that after fifth year or sixth year or seventh year you're using the value of you're using the asset rather which has a zero value in it because then at that point of time if you're going to sell that asset it will become obsolete and it will have a zero value or zero retention value hence it should be in line with the depreciation method change it should be in line with the sink or rather we can say that the annual value of that specific asset before becoming zero or coming to the verge of becoming zero should be the last year. So these are the things that you need to take into consideration. We'll solve a quick example here so that you have clear idea about what we are discussing or what agenda of this specific video is. Let's do that. Now that we have mentioned the illustration down here, we'll explain you what exactly they have mentioned and we'll start solving it. Mr. Jack has shared details of depreciations being provided for the year 2016. The April to March financial year is being considered. That means April from any month until March to the next year will be considered as a financial year here. In the year 2016, on 1st of April, they procured an asset which was amounting to rupees 10 lakhs. The company decided to pay 10% SLM depreciation for the first and the second year and then change it to 10% WDV method until its end of useful life, which is for five years. We have to find the difference between the depreciation that is provided for the first two years and then figure out whether the first two years under slm method was beneficial or whether it is beneficial under wdv method and then figure out third year depreciation for that specific asset so let's do it first we'll calculate according to slm method and then we'll calculate according to wdv method We have prepared the timeline for the same which states that cost is around 10 lakhs of that asset. Now the rate of depreciation is 10% SLM for the first two years and after the second year that means third year start will face WDV method as per 10% rate of depreciation. Useful life is five years here. So we need to figure out the difference between 10% SLM for the first two years and then 10% SLM for the first two years under WDV category.
So if you can figure out, we have made the working under SLM method. That means what we have done is that the original cost of the asset and the fixed depreciation under 10% SLM method has been calculated here. So for the first two years, that is 2016, 17 and 17, 18, we have one lakh depreciation being subtracted from the cost of the asset, which gives you a total of eight lakhs of that specific asset at the end of the second year. Now, the similar calculation will be doing it for the WDV method. Let's figure it out. We have also calculated the similar kind of depreciation under WDV method where 10% WDV rate of depreciation is charged on the cost of the asset. The only difference we have figured out is that now in the first year, the depreciation amount is same that is 1 lakh each. However, in the second year, the balance that is carried forward under WDV which is 9 lakh is used for calculating depreciation. So we have in the second year depreciation under WDV which is 90,000 which gives you the closing balance of that asset to be around 8,10,000. Now we'll be mentioning these two points on the other sheet and we'll figure out what is the analysis that we need to do while we have to figure out the difference in this. Now we have mentioned both these points here to understand the differentiation between what is the analysis what you need to do. We have maintained two methods side by side. Now under SLM method you can see the book value that is mentioned is 8 lakh rupees and under WDV method you can see that the book value that is mentioned is 8 lakh 10,000. So what figures out this amount is that under SLM method there is a steep reduction in the value of asset that means every year there is more and more depreciation being charged so at the end of its useful life we won't have the market value that we require because the market value is being taken away under the depreciation part. On the other hand, when we have WDV method, we still have an asset value which is more than as compared to the SLM method. So that is the first difference that you need to understand. Second, there is a marginal change in the rate of depreciation rather the amount of depreciation between both these methods which will have no effect on the profit and loss account as a majority part is covered under both these depreciation methods. That means one account shows a depreciation of 1 lakh per month or rather 1 lakh per annum and on the other hand, the same method shows that means change in method shows 90,000 depreciation per annum. So there is a marginal change we can say that is a 10% change in here and there when it comes to SLM and WDV. So when we talk about this kind of change it won't have a drastic effect on the profit and loss statement. However this will have a better value on the terms of asset value when we talk about balance sheet holding strong or balance sheet showing a strong financial position as the asset side is more as compared to the depreciation charge. So these are the points that you need to understand whenever there is a change in depreciation. So in these two cases which method is beneficial will be very clear on the basis of two things. What is the asset position of that asset or rather the financial position due to that asset at the end of its useful life. Whether one of the method depreciation is showing less amount of asset value at the end of its useful life or more amount of value. Second, what is the depreciation amount that is getting deducted from that asset value every year? So these two factors are very important to analyze which one is profitable. So in this situation, we have WDV method as the best possible way and hence they have changed it to WDV method under the third year. So I hope this video was very clear about giving you more details as to how to tackle problems like this whereby there is a change in method of depreciation. This is just a basic problem. We'll have a new and advanced problem to understand how these details are supposed to be captured and how the analysis is supposed to be done. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and keep subscribing to Ikeda.